<laughs> welcome, everybody. Welcome to another edition of SportWorks Talks. Uh, I'd like to welcome Lucia Montarello, who's with us this afternoon. Uh, great to have you with us. Um, greeting everybody, greetings to everybody who's joining us from around the world. Good afternoon, good evening, or good night, depending on where you are. Um, please, if you can, drop your, uh, say hello in the chat uh, and let us know where you are. Uh, that'd be great to see uh, where, where, where people are coming in from. Already seeing some people popping in from Brazil, a few people from France, Lausanne, from Rio. Hey, tudo bem? <laughs> That's all, I'm not going to do it. We won't do it in Portuguese this afternoon. Um, so, welcome this afternoon for this afternoon's talk. Lucia is going to give us a great presentation about media operations uh, in the context of post-COVID, um, what that potentially means, um, and also to help a little bit understand a little bit more about what media operations is. Um, great to have you with us. Thank you, Lucia. Um, it's funny, we, we've traveled around the world and followed each other around the world from games to games. And we were just talking before we came on, we now both find ourselves in the Olympic capital in Lausanne. So it's, uh, it's, nice, to, it's a nice place to be. Um, it, is, it is indeed. Yes. Hello, everyone. It's, it's great to see so many people joining in and uh, lots of uh, very well-known uh, people from the industry. So I hope I don't disappoint anyone. Uh, but it's uh, it's great. Thank you, SportWorks, for the invite. It's, it's a great opportunity to just brainstorm together on, on something that is actually touching all of us in the sports world. Yeah, very much so. So uh, with, let's crack on with the presentation. Um, what I would just say is a little bit of housekeeping. What we're going to do is we're going to run the presentation for about 20 minutes, and then we'll have about 20 minutes of Q&A at the end, um, and we'll do our best to answer the questions as, as they pop up. And as Lucia says, maybe some great, some get some ideas on how we can move forward with uh, media ops in a post-COVID context. So I'll hand over to Lucia. Thank you, Christian. Thanks, thanks a lot. And um, so it, it's funny because in the last few days when I was uh, thinking about this uh, webinar, there's been uh, quite a few people reaching out and especially one colleague said, are you mad that you're going to talk about something that is so difficult? And, uh, and uh, just to set the expectation, uh, there, there are not a lot of question, answers right now on, on how we will shape uh, our job in media operation uh, uh, post-pandemic. But I think it's, uh, it's worth starting talking to it because uh, uh, the sports industry is starting again, the events are coming up and we will have to uh, you know, answer a few questions. So I think we can get started uh, with, the, with the presentation uh, and, um, and attach, uh, you know, start with the, with the topic. I've, I've asked, uh, I've asked um, Christian to put up this video because funnily enough today, May 28, the rugby uh, events have resumed in Australia, and uh, I thought that this video that uh, BBC News put up just a few hours ago would be a, a good introduction to uh, what we are facing in the world of sport. So thanks, uh, uh, Christian, for putting up the video and starting it. It knew had to invent a game whereby coronavirus could be transmitted in the quickest manner possible. You'd come up with rugby league. They gotta sweat all over each other, they gotta wrestle all the time. There's gotta be bursting breath all over each other all the time. If somebody does test positive, it would go through two teams in nothing flat. The players, the officials and everyone have to self-isolate. They have to keep away from the community. So they go to the ground and go home again. And that's all they should be doing. Well, there's very little risk when you do that. It's a good example for all sports around the world that if you have the proper biosecurity measures in place, you can get sports going as long as everyone abides by the biosecurity measures. I've got no concerns at all. I think all the boys are, are really keen to start. Everyone's everyone's healthy and everyone's kept themselves fit in the in the little break we had.
obviously it's a shame and, and we love having all the fans there, but they're going to watch from the homes anyway. So even though we don't have that have that personal contact with them, we're going to try and do a good job for them. We'll have capped crowds, so we'll have the social distancing of one and a half metres and a stadium that could have fit 50,000 might fit 10,000. The next few weeks will be, again, a test for us to see that the data stays low, the infection rate stays low, there's not a spike. And if there isn't, you know, the risk is extremely low. And if we put those social distancing measures in place, we should have crowds. Thank you, Christian. So, as you saw, I mean, that was a, a clip appeared on BBC News just as I said a few hours ago. So, sports around the world seems to be uh, about to resume or resuming. Uh, it resume in Australia. We've just been um, hearing that baseball will resume in uh, Japan in July. Uh, the Bundesliga and soccer has resumed a couple of weeks ago. So, things are starting to move. But we also know that uh, social distancing has become the motto around the world for, for our life and, and even more when we're talking about events that potentially put uh, large numbers of people together. So when, when, when Christian approached me and at Sportworks to talk about media operation, I thought it would be uh, yeah, possibly challenging and, uh, and ambitious, but I said, let's see what's, uh, what's ahead for us uh, in, the, in the media operation world at sport events. As many of you know, my, my experience is basically mostly built uh, within the Olympic movement. Uh, I've, I've started, just to give you a bit of background, I've started uh, working in press operation at the Games in the, with the Sydney 2000 Games, and, and after that I've basically worked at every Games apart from Salt Lake City. Uh, so I've been breathing media operation and, and all the different uh, evolution in the, in the services and facilities for media uh, for the last, uh, well, nearly 20 years now. Uh, so I thought it was, uh, it was a good idea to, to, as I said, to brainstorm or to, you know, to speak louder about what's, what is in my head at the moment. To, to start, uh, uh, let's see what we will talk about today. I'll, I'll, I want to put in context uh, what we're looking at. So let's uh, uh, try to, to frame what media operation is, what are the key areas of action for media at sport events, what is the goal of media operation ultimately and what are the challenges and then obviously the huge big question that all have uh, all, all of us have right now when we talk about well basically when we talk about everything in life but uh, especially in uh, sport events so what future so Media operation, as uh, as many of you will know, because I can easily see the, the 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 quality and the number of professionals that are logged in. Um, the, the task of media operation is basically making sure that all of the accredited media at any given sport event are given the facilities and the service that help them create the best coverage of the event. Um, as I said, I've been exposed mostly to multi-sport events as the Olympic Games, so that will be uh, most of the focus on, of, of my own experience. But I think that this, uh, this brainstorming exercise will uh, for sure apply to any sort of sport events. So what are these services and facilities? They are, I, I always put technology first because uh, I think that uh, especially in the last decade, uh, technology has become possibly the number one ingredient to allow media to work and cover sport events. Uh, pretty much media can do with anything but uh, technology. So we, we, they, they, they need to have the technology uh, that allows them to file their photos, file their stories and connect to social platforms. So that's a key element. Obviously, the work areas are very important, and then there are all the different services. So we talk accreditation, accommodation, and transport logistics, and whatever you want to add to the list. What is also important to understand, and it's something I always uh, explain, is that media operation is not communication. I know that in, in, uh, in several uh, instances, in several organizations, is a bit of a mix, and usually media operation uh, falls under the communication department. To me, it's very important to understand that the mission of media operation is not 
the messaging, it's not the communication, it's not press releases, it is purely operation, exactly what the, the word operation means, and it's allowing the media to uh, do the, the, the job. So the, the key area of action of this uh, accredited media uh, are obviously the, the media center, uh, the broadcasting center as well. So I put it media just to say, but you know, it might be different areas. The, the press conference room is an area, mix zones, the press tribunes and commentary position and, and the photo positions, which to me are uh, in the context that we are today, possibly the most uh, challenging area to look at. The, the goal that we have in media operation is to make sure that throughout our event, whatever it is, or I always pick the example of, you know, our goal is that the day after the opening ceremonies of the games, we need to have that picture and that story worldwide on, on any publication around the world. And so that's the goal for media operation is to make sure that everybody can uh, cover the games and all of the great media are in the, put in the best position to do so. And um, I think it's very important to keep the goal in our head very clear, especially in this contest when, uh, and we will see throughout the, this, this conversation that we're having today, uh, when we are looking at uh, reduced numbers, potentially, you saw uh, also in the video that we're talking about, you know, capacities of venues that are um, basically being halved, and uh, if not more. And uh, so what, what will be, how, how can we still make sure that we have a situation like uh, this one, which basically all of the front pages of the main newspapers. This is a this is a this is a photo from the newspapers uh, of the uh, London Games. But uh, I, I think it gives perfectly the idea of what uh, what it is uh, really the goal we're looking at. This is uh, another example that I put, and the reason I put this example here is because. Um, it's the importance, as I said before, of photo. And uh, I think that nowadays, more than ever, the images have, a, have an important, uh, uh, have a great importance. And this was, again, a photo taken in London. And it was, uh, it was a photographer from uh, Associated Press. And it showed how important it was that one particular photo position that was uh, planned for the games actually created the perfect photo that ended up on the front page of some of the best uh, North American and most important North, North American daily papers. And uh, I think, again, it's, it's an image that gives the, the exact dimension of what is our job and, uh, and, and what we have to preserve for the events in the future and what I see that we will have to find solutions to, to make sure that uh, uh, for the positions in the right spots and uh, with the enough people to be able to access them will still be uh, possible at events. So the, I think that the global challenges that, well, that the world is, me is meeting, but that uh, in particular we will uh, uh, focus on the media industry and, uh, today is obviously on one side we have the health and safety, so the, the famous uh, uh, requirements of social distancing and uh, and cutting the crowds and the um, stadium that are on closed doors and, and all of that that is coming uh, following the pandemic or to actually live with the pandemic and the virus. And uh, on the other side, we have the, the financial crisis and the, and the financial impact that all of this pandemic has had. And I, I think that uh, ultimately, uh, and, and this is my strong perception, is that we might at sport events, when it comes to media coverage, be more affected by the latter, by the financial constraint, rather than the, uh, the, rather than the health and safety. So this is a, this is a, is a, is a headline, and, and to be honest, this is a slide that I prepared the other day, and uh, before even getting to the, to the BBC uh, clip that we showed before. So again, uh, things are starting to roll out, but um, the, 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 the limitation in fans, and, and from what I have heard, the limitation on numbers of media 
it's uh, it's there, and and it's something that we don't know how long we will have to live with it. When it comes to the Olympic Games, obviously we are talking about a population that is uh, quite uh, quite large. So just to give an idea again and put this uh, conversation in perspective. Uh, at the last Olympic Games in Rio 2016, the, the media population was 24,000 uh, over that and um, of, of accredited media. So media that were actually within the Olympic venues, that were actually working at the event, were actually covering the event. You see here all that's uh, the, the, the breakdown of numbers. So ultimately, as you can see, it's, uh, it's, quite a, it's quite a challenge if we have to think about social distancing, uh, uh, this sort of uh, uh, population and, uh, and, and, and what uh, uh, can be implemented for the future. So the, the areas of, of action of the media that we were talking about are, as we said, the media center. Uh, this is a venue media center in, uh, I'm not so sure if it's London or if it's uh, Rio. Uh, I think it looks like London, and um, it's it's not very crowded. But uh, I don't know which moment of the day. But obviously, uh, if we are starting to talk about social distancing in an area like this, obviously what comes with it is doubling the capacity, uh, and uh, and having a huge impact on what sort of uh, of structure we have to put in place. So, uh, for those of you who've been working at the at the um, sport events, uh, I'm sure that you've been dealing with uh, budget issues and, uh, and, and venue capacities. It's a, it's a constant, whatever world you are, whatever continent and whatever the, the, the capacities and, uh, are, are a big issue. And uh, obviously, if we need to think about uh, creating distancing, uh, that will have a, a, an impact that I can see already as a first challenge. And then we come to the crucial areas of the mix zone. And uh, obviously for different sports, we have different flows and different ways uh, the media works in the mix zone. This is the uh, cycling track mix zone again in London 2012. And as you can see, there is uh, quite a lot of people. And, and this is one of the lightest one. And, and again, how can we ensure that every single accredited uh, journalist is uh, granted access to the source for their information, which is the athletes, and at the same time keep social distancing, and at the same time work in an extremely tight timeline. For those of you who've been reporting or have been witnessing a mix zone, you know that the time is, uh, is very precious. So, Big question over there and food for thought for everyone. Uh, this is again the uh, images of crowded mix zones. And this one is a mix zone at, uh, again, London 2012. I think it was the athletic stadium in the little uh, uh, round there is the athletes. And uh, as you can see, there is quite a few people that are turning the back at the athletes because they are trying to point their recorders to the um, sound system that is provided in the mix zone, which is broadcasting the uh, interview. And um, if we look at social distancing, I don't think that this is a situation that will in the future be uh, possible. However, the help of the technology in a mix zone, which already exists somehow and already existed in London and it's been repeated at the games, and I'm sure that there are many other sport events where it's repeated, obviously uh, there is uh, uh, the possibility of providing uh, the, uh, the, the sound, the, 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 the interview, the content of the interview through different technologies, and that could obviously be an option. Where it becomes tricky is how you can actually have enough reporters asking those questions, and, and that's where maybe there is uh, some uh, really deep uh, reflection and deep uh, thinking that we have all to make to see how we can have the help of technology in, uh, in ensuring also access to the assets and the sources by uh, by the, the older reporters. Another shot from London 20, 2012, this was triathlon. Uh, 
similar similar situation here. Uh, the outdoor venues usually they also pose a, a problem with uh, regard of the sound and the difficulties on having the sound. Uh, maybe maybe we can you know the, the the way I look at it is actually to have some selected uh, reporters and, and broadcasting the, the interviews in in other press areas that could be uh, accessed by larger numbers. And then we come to the press conferences. The, the press conferences, obviously, um, I don't know if uh, any of you have seen, but I've seen a, a few uh, press conferences uh, in, lately that uh, have allowed uh, uh, presence. And uh, obviously, again, it goes on cutting the numbers and cutting the audience. Uh, but reality is that what we've also witnessed in the last couple of months is that press conferences online have been basically becoming the norm. And I was talking to a colleague from Reuters a few weeks ago, and he said, you know, we've been doing business as usual without leaving our homes. So reality is that what is uh, the, the remote working and the remote reporting, which uh, was uh, something that was seemed very impossible to carry on, is now become the norm. And I am uh, personally sure that this will have uh, an impact on uh, the way media will cover events in the future. And, uh, and, and I think it will be very important for anyone that is like us on this side of the fence in, in, in organizing and, and providing services and facilities to the, to the, to the um, press to ensure that we are aligned with what are the needs. And, and again, keeping in mind our goal, which is what we said before, to make sure that this, the events do not suffer from a lack of coverage. Uh, this is another press conference. Uh, I think it was uh, the night of the 100 meters uh, in, in, in London. And um, again, the, the, the amount of uh, of, uh, of uh, the attendance is very large, the amount of uh, people is very large, and uh, it makes you really question if this will be possible. And then we come to photo positions, and as, as I said before, uh, I think photo position uh, are the trickiest area, because if we can think about ways for the reporters to follow the competition from remote and even potentially ask questions and uh, interact with the athletes and uh, access to sources of information from remote when it comes uh, when it comes to the uh, photo positions uh, it's, uh, it's 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 tough to take photos from remote so that's uh, that's obviously an area where uh, we, we can't um, go without having the physical presence of photographers on, uh, on, on the ground. This is, uh, for those of you who uh, might have not uh, attended the Olympic Games, these are just a few shots of, uh, just to give the idea about um, what is the number of photographers involved in, uh, in Olympic events. This is an Olympic stadium. Uh, and this is uh, again an Olympic stadium where the uh, social distancing for photos like this are quite impossible to pretend, I would say. So, as we said before, on one side we have health and safety, so, and the social distancing that we hear is so, um, is so strongly. Uh, advised and suggested as one of the solution to contain the spread of the virus. And on the other side, we have the remote reporting because I think that's possibly the situation that we need to introduce in our thinking of planning for media operation in the future, because not only we might find ourselves to have to cut the numbers of the people who are on the ground, but we might also face the fact that uh, the media industry are not able to support their resources to go on the ground. And, and then it, it, this will open to a total different scenario on how we can facilitate, uh, always you know, aiming at 
the ultimate goal that we talked about it before. How can we facilitate people accessing the sources and, uh, and reporting and providing the coverage on the event, but basically staying home? And, uh, and I see in the chat there are a few suggestions uh, which are a uh, very smart suggestion. Uh, some of them might be biased, but uh, uh, they, are, they, are very, they are very interesting uh, suggestions uh, regarding increasing the news service. Uh, what, I, what I think uh, ultimately is that we uh, have always to also try and give the ability to the reporter to um, access the uh, source. And so I think that while the, the, the news service, and it's something I will talk later, is a resource, I think we have to go a bit further than that. So this, um, this caught my attention because, uh, as possibly most of you, we were all eager to see the very first uh, soccer games that resumed in uh, Germany. And uh, this was a, a sort of a new style of mix zone. Uh, and, uh, and when I saw this photo, I said, oh my God, how can we implement something like this at the Olympic Games? I mean, I think it would be possibly uh, uh, quite, uh, quite challenging to do. But, uh, but this is the reality. This is where we are now. And uh, I, I must say, and I'm not, um, uh, I'm not ashamed to admit, that I am um, looking forward to actually seeing what is happening in, in sport events in the, in the next few months to, to try and also understand how we can support our uh, colleagues in, in Tokyo 2020 to be uh, ready for the, for the Games. Uh, as you can imagine, in the, in, the, in the reshaping of the planning for the postponed Olympic Games, there are lots of discussion in trying to understand what the uh, situation will be like uh, at the Olympic Games. And, uh, and obviously for me being involved in media, uh, I, I'm looking at all the different possibilities for, for when it comes to media operation. The, the future approach, um, this is a photo that was taken again in London. Um, and um, and it's, uh, it was not meant to be used. I mean, I could never, I thought I took this photo and I could never think that I would use it in a presentation like the one of today talking about uh, COVID-19. Uh, it's, it's a photo that was uh, meant to describe the way the, the uh, Olympic news service reporters were working uh, along with the Olympic Broadcasting Services um, uh, reporters. Uh, reality, it, it becomes quite a, 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 a significant image because one of the options would be possibly exactly this, to have uh, some uh, uh, reporters from the news service uh, as long as, along with maybe the, the Olympic uh, Channel News and, uh, and asking questions and these interviews being broadcasted and being made available to the accredited media. Um, the step further would be, uh, and there have been already some discussion about it, would be obviously to collect uh, to build a system to have uh, the questions uh, from the reporters uh, kind of uh, pre-collected so that uh, uh, we can make sure that we can actually um, provide uh, those, uh, those interviews kind of uh, tailored to the, to the questions that the, that the press would like to ask. And that's obviously something. Is this the way forward? Um, again, as I said, uh, I don't have that, that answer right now, uh, but I hope that, uh, that we will understand in the coming weeks and, and, and months how, what's best for the industry. Um, remote reporting tools, obviously, uh, for those of you who are familiar with the games, you know that there is an info system that provides uh, information and, and results and data. Uh, it's, it's not a unique tool. I mean, every sport event and international sport events have some sort of uh, information source. Obviously, as, uh, as suggested uh, uh, by some of our uh, of the participants here, um, the, 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 the official source of information and the, the information service and, 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 and the online uh, tools to access information uh, will become uh, more relevant. 
uh, and uh, and obviously might have to have an expanded uh, content uh, to make sure that also from uh, from remote um, reporters can uh, can access the, the the content. The obviously some. Uh, some remote reporting uh, can happen, and we've seen it, as I said before, happening at press conferences uh, by, you know, live streaming of press conferences. This is something that is already used in uh, in several several events, and, and it has been used in pretty much in every single government, or at least in Europe. Uh, uh, from, I've been following uh, a lot of government press conferences during the. The pandemic and the lockdown and, and the, the, the press conference with us question us from remote have been become the norm. So I think that that's uh, that would be actually quite um, quite simple to implement and uh, and obviously will uh, will allow uh, people on site and people from remote to cover the press conferences. Uh, th this is, was an example of what uh, it was done in Pyeongchang. I know that a stream. A, High number of events do the same, and uh, and uh, and by the way, there's the plans already for Tokyo 2020 to have a, a, a live streaming of every post competition press conference, every medal round press conference. So, um, if uh, if if we see that that's uh, there is a need for it to to create an additional tool for you know asking questions from remote, we will obviously with our uh, colleagues in Tokyo, we will uh, we will look into it. Uh, again, as I said, what's the what is the what is the response or what is the solution for photo? Um, that's I think it's a much harder uh, solution to find because we will need photographers on site. Uh, there is a, there is a certain um, help. That can be provided by technology. So this is a photo, or this is an image of the re remote cameras that were set up uh, on at the stadium at some games. Um, obviously, the technology is of the robotic cameras, and the remote cameras is uh, is expanding dramatically. Uh, if you if you talked about remote cameras in Sydney, it would be. An absolute, uh, uh, an absolute rarity, and while well, actually now there is a full project of uh, plans to have all these uh, remote and robotic cameras. So obviously that will help capturing from a distance, and it might allow you know creating some social distancing. But obviously it's not the solution, and and I think that the solution will have to be looked at in terms of pooling images or you know providing a rotation or, or, or whatever i think that's uh, that's that's quite a bit of uh, of brainstorming that needs to be uh, happening uh, when it comes to when it comes to to, to photo um, i think that here my presentation is ending and i see that there are quite a few questions I don't know if I want to give it back to you, Christian, and uh, and you see what's uh, what our friends online have been asking for. Hi, Legio. Yeah, great presentation. Um, and yes, you're right. Some great questions coming through. Uh, I think you've you've highlighted the challenge of how do we keep this human element of reporting. Uh, how do we retain that? Because technology will go a long way in solving you know, quite a number of these problems. We've been working for years now on trying to find ways to solve some of these problems using technology. You mentioned about what we're doing in Tokyo with streaming all the press conferences. So all of these are in play. But I think when, as you talk it through and just through your presentation, when we see about the mix zones, you know, how important, my question to you is, and I'm thinking about, you know, we can use technology to solve these problems. How important is that human interaction it is. to be in the mix zone, to be able to ask the athlete at that point in time to say, you know, that key question. Um, I guess that's probably where that touch, where I see that touch point, and I guess that's my question to yeah. you and your media colleagues, how do we solve that problem? There, there, are, there are two phases to this. The, the one is, is the human factor and the fact that every single reporter wants the uniqueness of their questions. 
So, I mean, that's, that's what you want. You know, you don't want to be provided and fed with some answers. You want to, because, because you, you have the best questions and you want to ask those questions. So that's the challenge number one. Challenge number two is how we, we, can't, we can't penalize the one that are attending by providing everything remote because there will still be major agencies or bigger media organization that thank God they have the budget and thank God they can cover the games and that will be making the effort of sending people. So you can't open it up everything through technology because then, I mean, how, how, how does it work? You know, I'm staying home on my couch and I watch the games and possibly it's not hot as it will be in Tokyo. I have my air conditioning, my drink, I sit on the couch and I do my reporting and the other one is down there in Tokyo, is sweating in a mix zone, is screaming to get the quotes that he wants, and he's yeah. got the same result. So it's, it's not as easy. So uh, technology is a great support, but I think that the moment that we decide to introduce technology, uh, there, there must be some sort of fairness in the way and what sort of information is made available from remote and what uh, and what's not because otherwise it becomes really unfair and and ultimately i think that we all want as organizer we want the best coverage from with the best reporters on site so it's just finding the right balance yeah it's um and to, to, to try and solve those two problems putting a technology interface in there isn't going to, isn't going to give you that that human element, I think. That, that, that's where we've got a little challenge. Okay, so I'm just going to run through a few questions. If you've got questions, please put them in the chat um, and we'll work through. Um, I've got a comment here from Renata Hoff. Hi, Renata. Um, and just a comment saying, this is not the new norm, though. It's the old norm modified to corona. Yeah, it's a good point. Um, the whole thing should be reconfigured from all points of view, which will translate to something different and new and beneficial to all stakeholders. So that's looking at fans, media players. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Renata. Um, it doesn't just apply to uh, press and media operations. Uh, and it's a good point you raise. So thanks for that. Yeah. Um, Antonio uh, Cavallo. Uh, hi, Antonio. Uh, question here. European Athletics Diamond League uh, flash quote system allows for quotes to enable on the CIS website, uh, which are available to both media fans almost in real time. Uh, could this be a way forward? Um, I'm just going to yeah, fill in the acronym. Uh, for those who don't know what CIS, it's uh, um, Commentator Information System. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, and, that's, and that's, uh, that's something that happens at the Olympic Games already. Uh, uh, obviously, when you have a, a multi-sport event, you can't pretend that the same reporter can be at every single competition at the same time. So we, we, we already do support the work of reporters on site through the flash quotes uh, reporting uh, system and the quotes are posted on info. Uh, so uh, yes, the next step to that is, as I said, possibly uh, is, to, is to allow for some media to ask uh, the question or the athletes that they want, because mostly you have quotes from gold medalists, silver medalists, bronze medalists. Maybe the answer to that is to expand that to a larger number of athletes so that uh, we are covering more completely the, 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 the games. Yeah, I mean, because CIS as a solution is quite limited in that you don't have, it doesn't reach to everybody in the stadium, it is specifically for the commentators, so it's, yeah, as you say, yeah. expanding. Yeah. Okay. Um, next question here from uh, Xiaohan Wen. Uh, thanks, Xiaohan, um, and apologies in advance for pro bad pronunciations of names. Um, hi, Lucia. Uh, what has the COVID-19 changed media operations currently? Um, do you have to put the process on hold? And how do you communicate with the media and broadcasters to address the current issues? And what has been your internal change in ways of working and implementing plans? Well, that, that's, that, that's the big challenge. Uh, it's, it's that um, as, as everybody else, we've been immersed into our lockdown and we've been uh, reading the news, um, but we don't have a clear picture about how for instance, the Tokyo Games, which are our next event when it comes to, 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 the, uh, to the Olympic um, movement, how will Tokyo be impacted? I, I am not able, I'm not in a position right now to tell you if of those uh, 25,000 plus media accredited to the Games, how many will not come? 
uh, because uh, we are just starting the process now. And um, I can tell you because this is something that is not uh, it's, it's not it's not a secret. Uh, with Tokyo 2020, we are working at trying to find out what's the real situation, and we've uh, sent out a survey to understand how many uh, of the organizations that had booked an office at the main press center are confirming their office. And the response is actually very promising because only less than one percent. Uh, are not uh, confirming, all the others have said, no, no, we're coming, we're there. So on one side, you have this reassuring uh, elements, and on the other side, you read the news. And if you read the news, you read about, you know, media organization and that are just closing down and stuff that is uh, laid off, and, uh, and, and you just say, okay, how will that be, you know? Uh, so uh, I'm afraid um, uh, that there's no answer to that yet, and and uh, so I that's that's the big open question is that I don't know how it will be impacted, but I have the strong feeling that it will, and that's why I am brainstorming with myself and today with all of you on what the solution could be. Yeah, I, it's also I think it goes well with to the next question here because the, the other contributor or the, to this, um, and Roberto Fasson uh, has raised a question here, you know, speaking of the Olympic and Paralympic Games, how is it possible to deal with so many countries, considering the differences in government policies in relation to health control? Um, you know, this is another uh, another input on, on this decision tree uh, that, that we really have no visibility on. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome to our world. That's. Uh, I mean, we 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 are all working from home now, and we have uh, lots of uh, calls within with the IOC, with Tokyo, with Beijing 2022, and with our colleagues at the IOC that works in different departments. And we all have the same open questions. We do not know because you know we do not know when and how people will be able to travel to Japan. And, uh, and in what conditions? I see down in the chat that there are people asking about how will uh, the sanitizing of equipment in the field of play happen. Um, it, it will possibly, it's something that's coming. I mean, uh, in uh, Tokyo 2020 is, is, is writing down all the sanitary measures that uh, they're going to be implemented. The IOC is working extremely closely with the World Health Organization who have uh, given support uh, for us to, to actually draw the board how we have to comply to all the measures. But um, it's an evolving situation. You know, if you look back at where we were in February and where we are today, uh, and, and, and for all of you in your respective world, for some of you things are going worse, for some it's going better, for some of us are leaving our homes, some others are just stuck at home for another two months. So uh, it, it's, a very, it's, it's very difficult. That's why I'm saying it's, um, it's food for thought for everyone. And, and I think that uh, we, we we might really need to to look at what the rest of the world does. As I said, very selfishly, I'm extremely pleased that the sport is starting. Not because I love sport and I want to watch it, but because I want to see what the others do. I I, I would have really liked to see at the rugby game that we saw before uh, how they were talking to the media at the end of the games if they were. Uh, unfortunately, there was no footage provided of that. But I, I, I will, I will try to understand what the others do, and we will be guided by common sense, I guess. Well, there, there's a, there's a shout out to everybody participating around the world, and if you are attending uh, at a sport event, um, yeah, please let us know if you do if you are able to snap a shot and things of especially around operations, because I think that these are the things that will help us collectively as a, as, as a community, as people who work in sport, um, to get that visibility and, and think of different ideas. So thanks for your ideas and thanks for the questions that are coming through. Um, Lucia, we've probably got a couple more minutes just for a couple more. Um, I've got one here from Anna Costa, uh, and it's a good question about how to avoid pasteurization of coverage when the first measure to be taken is to reduce the diversity of professionals on the field. You know, how could a photographer better prepare for this new reality of covering events remotely and continue doing a unique coverage? It's a, it's a really key point, great question. Yeah, it is a great question. And uh, I think it's a great question with, uh, with no answer. Uh, yeah. I, mean, I think that there is, uh, the answer would be balance. I think that the answer would be balance, and the other answer would be listening to the industry. We can't decide this by ourselves. 
we'll have to listen to the industry, we'll have to involve the industry in every decision we make in providing services to them. We'll have to open a dialogue and, and understand, understand when, uh, when there is a, a, an outlet, a media outlet that cannot send people, how we can provide the coverage to them and how we can help them without obviously pasteurizing the coverage and without, you know, uh, undignifying the work of those reporters. Uh, but I said it's a, it's a tough one because at the same time there will be people attending. And so um, it's a, to me the, the answer is open a dialogue with the industry and see what makes sense for the industry and always keeping in mind that our goal is to make sure that the Games gets the coverage and that everybody can enjoy the coverage of the Olympic Games. Yeah. Uh, key point. Um, last, I will just have this last question here. What is your opinion from uh, Jane uh, Lopez? Thanks, Jamie. Um, what is your opinion of remote simultaneous translation? Um, is this an opportunity for such a service? It's a good. Yeah, it, it is. A, it is a great service. It is a great service. Actually, we've started uh, working with FIFA. Uh, because they, they must, I must say that they are really uh, in, in, in many ways ahead of, of, ahead of the games in, uh, in looking at different ways of providing professional interpretation. Uh, professional interpretation has always been a, a big, big line in the budget uh, of, every, of every sport event. And uh, I, I believe that uh, there are ways from remote interpretation. Actually, in uh, Tokyo, we are um, uh, introducing remote interpretation. And actually, it's that remote interpretation feed that allow us to live stream the post-competition press conferences. So there's a lot of synergies there. So I'm a, I'm a great uh, believer that it's, uh, it's the way to go. Yeah. And, um, okay. and it's been great seeing those evolutions. Um, yeah. I mean, there's and things that we're interpreters, uh, because I know that uh, some of them are not really happy with this. But uh, I'm really sorry for them. But uh, I think it's the way to go. Yeah. Okay, so um, look, one more question um, from Fabio Cajera. Um, hi, Lucia. Thanks for this great presentation. Uh, question. To the points discussed here and considering the dramatic change in media reporting remotely and also due to financial crisis affecting media even before COVID, uh, how likely do you think the media industry will return to their old ways of reporting sport events in the event of a permanent medical solutions for the COVID-19 crisis? Uh, what what is the old way? Uh, what is the old ways? I don't know what the what really the what Fabio means for the old ways. But uh, uh, what, what what I can see, what I see is uh, is rather than the old ways, the new ways. Because I think, as I said, that technology will play a big role. Uh, in the old ways, I don't think that there was uh, social platforms that uh, social media platform that now allow you know if you do a Facebook live or you do whatever you want with uh, with with your phone and uh, and uh, the apps and things. So I think rather than the old way, it would be a different way. Uh, but um, as I said, I I I don't. I think we have to embrace technology to help us making sure we it, we don't penalize the, the true reporting yeah okay well look i, I think you've I, throughout this conversation we've we've said from the start like this is a brainstorming session it is great to have all everyone's input and the questions because it does uh promote the you know start getting us thinking about how we're going to solve some of these challenges um, not all of it is going to be technology. I mean, I love technology, as you know, and I'm trying to find solutions for you for years. Um, and may, long may that continue. Um, I just wish I looked at ways, how do we keep that human interface, um, especially for your reporters, uh, to keep that, that human element is, is key. Um, I want to say uh, thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, yeah, maybe, Chris, maybe, Christian, you want to, maybe Christian, you want to tell our, our the participants uh, that uh, that we will answer question that we haven't answered. Uh, Absolutely, yeah, no yeah. problem at all. I just want to give. Was there any other comments from you in parting with the participants or anything else? No, if there is anybody out there with great ideas of uh, how we solve these huge uh, dilemmas, uh, come forward. I'm I'm all ears.
Yeah, fantastic. So uh, on that note, I want to say thank you for everyone for participating. As Lucia says, um, please uh, know that we'll do our best to answer your questions and the ones that we didn't get to and the ones we did get to today. Um, they'll all go out onto sportworker.com, onto the forum uh, that will be linked to this presentation for the replay. Um, I want to say thank you again, Lucia, for coming and joining us, um, sharing your problems so we can help uh, collectively try and help solve it. Um, and to thank you for all the participants joining us this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Great. Stay safe, stay healthy, and, and we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Bye.